Hello lovely people. Here we are going to see two questions in microbiology for the MR Chem Primary. I am Sajad Pathan and let us begin with our questions. A 28 year old male is in the ED with high grade fever and septic shock. He was seen in the ED two days ago with a thigh abscess which was drained and packed. What organism is likely cultured on the culture media? You can pause the video and select your answer from the options given, which is gram-negative urease positive rods, gram-positive catalase negative cocci in chain, gram-negative coagulase positive cocci in clusters, gram-positive coagulase negative cocci in clusters, gram-positive beta hemolytic cocci. Let us look at question number two. A microbiologist is examining a slide of bacteria from a culture media. He sees gram-positive cocci in cluster. Subsequent tests run on the bacteria reveal that it is coagulase negative and is resistant to novobiosin. What is the likely disease the patient has? Again, pause the video and select an answer from the options. Catheter-induced UTI, impetigo, infective endocarditis, pharyngitis with grey-white membrane and uncomplicated UTI. In the first question, if we look closely at the options, we will understand that they are trying to figure out which bacteria is there. So let us see the explanation. Now the most common cause of an abscess is Staphylococcus aureus. Someone with recurrent abscesses is usually a patient with diabetes, mellitus or an IV drug user. Remember, Staph aureus is quite positive. It is gram positive, catalase positive, coagulase positive. And when somebody is too positive, there are people around them. So they are grouped in clusters. They are grouped in clusters. The virulence of Staph aureus is due to five toxins. Number one is protein A. Number two is penicillinase binding protein, which is the cause of MRSA. The most important one is the super antigen, which is toxic shock syndrome toxin 1. And that is the cause for giving rise to <coughs> a septic shock in cases where there is a gauze piece or a nasal packing or a tampoon. Now this abscess was packed and the patient presented two days later with septic shock. So possibly it is Staphylococcus aureus. Exfoliative toxin is another virulence factor which is responsible for the Staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome in children less than five years of age. And then there is the enterotoxin. So these five toxins are really important in identifying Staph aureus related infections. If you look at this chart, the gram-positive bacteria is divided into cocci, bacilli and branching filaments. Let us concentrate on cocci because in the options, most all the organisms were cocci. So let us concentrate. We divide the cocci on catalase positive and catalase negative. So we said Staph aureus is the most common cause of an abscess which was packed. So Staph aureus is catalase positive and coagulase positive. And that is the right answer. If we look at the options given, gram-negative urease positive rods. These are gram-negative. So gram-negative doesn't cause abscess. And the organism here is Proteus mirabilis, which is implicated in strew white stones, which is the magnesium phosphate stone, uh, called as strew white stone. Gram-positive catalase negative. So we are not looking at catalase negative. And that is uh, in chain, not in cluster. That is streptococci. Gram-positive, coagulase-positive, cocci in cluster. That is what we are looking at, Staph aureus. Gram-positive, coagulase-negative cocci in clusters. That is Staph epidermidis or saprophyticus. Staph epidermidis is implicated in a kind of a foreign body, such as a catheter or IV axis line, central lines. And... Uh, the prosthetic heart valves. Staph saprophyticus is a normal commensal of a female genital tract. So <clears throat> this can give rise to UTI. This is 
gram-positive coagulase-negative cocaine cluster. This can give rise to UTI, Stap, Saprophyticus, and it is called as honeymoon cystitis. Uh, usually, it's a female who gets a, a UTI. It's the second most common cause of uncomplicated UTI in a female. Now, gram-positive catalase-negative beta-hemolytic. So, we are <coughs> looking at step pyogenes or A. galactiae. So the correct answer over here is Staph aureus, gram-positive, coagulase-positive, TSST1, super antigen virulence factor, causing septic shock. Let us look at question number two. So here, the microbiologist is looking at gram-positive cocaine cluster. So again, we are looking at the catalase-positive one, uh, which is cocaine cluster. Subsequent test says it is coagulase negative. So it should be coagulase negative would be the epidermidis or saprophyticus. And it's resistant to novobiosin. So what is this patient likely has? Does it have a catheter induced UTI, impetigo, infective endocarditis, pharyngitis with gray white membrane, uncomplicated UTI? Again, let's look at this chart again. So we said gram positive cocci, which is catalase positive and coagulase negative. So we are looking at these two organisms, again, sa Staph saprophyticus and Staph epidermidis. Staph epidermidis is novobiosin sensitive and saprophyticus is novobiosin resistant. So in this scenario, they said gram-positive coagulase negative clusters, novobiosin resistant. So it should be Staph saprophyticus. So catheter in this UTI, we said biofilm production by staph epidermidis impetigo was trap pyogenes infective endocarditis in uh, prosthetic valves it is staph epidermidis and in normal valves it is uh, strep virulence pharyngitis with gray white membrane is c diphtheria uncomplicated uti in a female is staph saprophyticus and that is no bias in resistant so the right answer here is an uncomplicated UTI. I hope you like this video. And if you want more, please do comment down. Please do like and share this video amongst your colleagues so that many doctors will benefit from this. Many patients will benefit from this. Happy studies. Peace.